There is an unbelievable amount of broken, overpowered, competitive tanks within World of Tanks console and today's video is going to showcase my personal top tanks for every single tier. We're going to look at one tank per tier that I think is kind of the pinnacle, albeit very close to the pinnacle. There are some tiers that, you know, there's multiple different tanks that could be quite easily the top tank, but I'm just going to pick my five from tier five and up. We're not going to go any lower because there's not really any point, but let's start right now down at tier five there are two key tanks that are in my personal opinion are very very strong and it's not actually the one that you think it is it, i am not going to be saying that the panzer 54 is the one in today's video for being the all-round kind of very strong competitive tank in fact and that title goes to the captured KV-1, which in my personal opinion is probably the better of the two for doing consistent damage throughout every single game that you play and to be able to be very much the forefront of your team to carry games i think it's the one to go with yes the panzer 54 is very 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 strong and can be blatantly overpowered in a lot of scenarios but i think in terms of enjoyment in terms of being able to consistently do your damage and be able to come top then this thing is kind of where it's at at least if you're firing premium ammunition in this thing, if you're firing standard ammunition, this probably goes down a few in the pecking order and you'd probably be looking at the Panzer 54 being almost the most competitive tank, if not the most competitive tank. But it does go, in my personal opinion, to the Capture KV-1. Of course, if you have any differences in opinion, you know, this is just my opinion. Mine is not necessarily the definitive. And of course, you may have a completely different outlook on what you think is the most competitive tank down at tier five. And of course, I'm not always right, as I'm sure many of you know, so if you've seen any length of these videos. But let's jump into tier six and have a look there. Now, I'm sure that if any of you have watched any of my videos, and especially the Hellcat 105 ones, you probably think that I would pick this as the most competitive tank, but you'd be completely wrong. This tank is perfectly unbalanced in the game and completely strong and very, very versatile in the hands of an experienced player that knows about the game. But I don't think as a general rule, this tank is necessarily uh, super, super competitive comparatively um, because we have to think of it in a way of like not everyone knows the camo mechanics. Not everyone can fully utilize the aspects of this tank uh, to really push it out. And so today's one is actually going to be the t34 ata and this is a all-round monster this thing can push out unbelievable amounts of damage in such a short period of time the tank has a ridiculous dpm it's mobile it also has the ability to kind of spot for itself it is perfect in terms of having every aspect that you need as a player on world of tanks console down at tier 6 to just farm the opponents that you're coming up against it's very, very easy for a skilled player to be able to pick up 3,000 damage in this thing. And of course, for a, an average player, you'll probably be looking at like one and a half thousand. But considering this is tier six and your hit points are only 720, dealing double the damage of your hit points very quite easily in this thing is no mean feat. And that is why the T3488 is probably my most competitive or at least the kind of pinnacle of what I would call a versatile and competitive tank at tier 6. Now at tier 7 there are multiple premium tanks within the game that we could potentially call one of the most competitive but actually in my personal opinion I think you're probably better off going with something like the T29, the heavy tank from the American line which is basically such an all-rounder, just a monster at this tier and it is able to perform things admirably, it's able to really do any role on the battlefield albeit you can't really be a light tank but it doesn't have the worst spotting and it means that you can really um, play how you like to and dominate especially if you're top tier there is very little things opponents can really do against you because the uh, accuracy of the tank's perfect the 
gun handling of this thing is perfect. You've basically got everything that you need as a heavy. And then alternatively, if you're not so much a fan of the standard version and you want a tank that can earn you credits, you can jump in the premium version of the T29, which has a load of spaced armor slapped all over it, because Wargaming thought, let's take one of the best tanks non-premium in the game, slap a load of spaced armor on it, and basically reduce very little, and therefore, yeah, it would be absolutely fine. Of course, the Minuteman is what we're talking about and both these tanks the t29 variants are amazing and i really hope that you guys have the pleasure of playing in the non-premium version the t29 or alternatively the minuteman which are, are one of my favorites and most competitive i feel like i can be the real uh, solid tank at tier 7 and conquer the matchmaker at least when you're even plus two minus two which these tanks can see now as many of you know there is just an I don't even know, a ridiculous amount of tier 8s within World of Tanks. So picking one specific most competitive tank can be so difficult. It is so subjective. And so I'm going to give my shot at trying to actually pick the one. Or at least my spin on it, the one that I feel like I can perform the best in. It might not be the best for you guys. And of course, there's such a variety in gameplay, whether you are a more aggressive player, whether you're a more passive player, whether you're a heavy tank player, whether you prefer um, kind of staying at the back and using spotting, that sort of thing. There's so many different roles. But I think because of that, I've got to pick the Barask. The Barask is a tank that, in my personal opinion, uh, can perform in almost every sense of the word, being a very versatile tank. And that is because this tank right here has both alpha damage on its side, the clip potential 720 alpha in two shots that rapidly fire out of this gun. It's a technically a medium tank, but it can go 62 kilometers an hour, has very little armor and plays more like a light tank. It has the view range of said light tank really um, and you also have very good concealment. You've got um, very much a, a decent hit point chunk over light tanks at this tier as well. And it also is just one of those tanks that I feel like can be so competitive, so versatile. And once again, I feel like flexibility in World of Tanks can be the determining factor in whether you can win the game. Because we've all been in the scenarios where we're in a really slow heavy tank and you just get caught out. There's no way of you being able to get back and defend the base or do certain aspects within the game. That's where the speed comes into World of Tanks and that's why speed is so important. And the Barask has plenty of it and in general one of my favorites is it the best tank in the game that's down to your personal opinion do i think it's going to be crushing certain tanks no do i think it can crush games definitely then we've seen that in some of the barask replays that i've showcased on this channel and of course you guys have your own opinions you might really enjoy something like the fcm 50t doesn't mean it's necessarily the most competitive same as what i'm saying with the barask doesn't mean it's the most competitive but it's certainly one that i feel like the majority of players can have good games in and it means that they can learn a variety of aspects within world of tanks and hopefully get better which is ultimately what most people want to do when they're playing the game now then jumping into tn9 it's getting slightly more interesting or at least um I'm very, very divided. There are two tanks, in my personal opinion, that I have absolutely, unbelievably, unequivocally loved playing. And that is actually the Tortoise, the Tier 9 British tank destroyer. I have found this tank to be one of my favourite tanks that I've ever played in the game. And it's because of the alpha damage, it's because of the DPM, it's because of the fact that this tank somewhat has armour, at least since the buffs that they've introduced after update 6.0 on all of the various different changes that Wargaming have made to the tank and its tank line up to the Badger and of course the FV215B183, the Death Star. And this is why the Tortoise, in my personal opinion, is just such a powerful tank. And if you can get it in the right place, style if you can use the speed boost equipment and certainly you'll be wanting to put on traction system uh, or alternatively advanced powertrain or alternatively both it has good view range it's very very f uh, decent when it comes to dishing out damage which is of course the primary aspect but it's, in my personal opinion, limited in terms of its competitiveness uh, because of the fact that it is pretty slow, it's a non-turreted tank, and therefore that is why I have gone with the Skoda T50 as the actual T50 
tier 9 that I think is very, very competitive, and especially in the hands of someone that knows how to play a autoloader within World of Tanks, and that is because this tier 9 medium has 960 alpha damage. It's a three-shot, 320 alpha damage autoloader that has fantastic view range. It has fantastic dispersion. It's like a sniper. This thing has brilliant accuracy and in general the speed of the tank makes it really really good as well you can get up to 50 kilometers an hour which is no slacker and yeah i think this is super powerful super underrated do i think it couldn't be eclipsed by certain tanks i don't know of course that's down to your own personal preference but it's a tank that i have absolutely adored as with the tortoise both of them to be honest with you would be a good choice as a tier 9 that you think will be able to win you games and and carry and hopefully that kind of comes across in this video it's not all about just picking one tank that is certainly going to be able to every single game win you every single game it doesn't really work like that it's all about your play style and hopefully it gives you an idea as to what the good tanks are and what you kind of need in terms of like securing the damage now let's get on to the tier 10s now I'm not going to lie, this is probably the hardest decision out of all of them and that is because there are so many tier 10s, there are so many opportunities for you to play a different aspect. There are tanks like the Object 279E, however on console I don't feel it's as strong as it is on PC and therefore we're not going to be including it in today's video as kind of the most competitive. We've also got tanks like the T57 Heavy which is really really fun to play, super uh, kind of useful in a lot of scenarios but yet again it kind of fails with the armor model and there are other autoloaders that I feel like most competitive players will be able to take advantage of just a little bit more so it is a very good shout. And then we have tanks like the T95 FV4201 Chieftain and this is a very very solid tank. It isn't today's winner however it is a very very solid tank and that's what I want to kind of get to get across to you guys is the kind of most competitive tanks um, and give you a, a variety of different ones that you can look at albeit uh, under the guise of being at the top five we've got you know multiple different tanks at each tier now then guys what is this tank that is the most competitive at least in my personal opinion having played so many different tanks and playing a variety of different play styles both aggressive passive scouting variety and just in general in my personal opinion and probably an unpopular opinion the object 277 now hear me out this is a tank that plays very much like a medium heavy tank and this is a role that I've really adapted to throughout my uh, playstyle on World of Tanks because it allows you to both be flexible whilst also providing enough armor, providing enough kind of uh, pack-a-punch to really negate a lot of the opponents that can kind of YOLO you. Yes, you could say something like the FV4005 could be an alternative to something that can just stop opponents but it can't hit all of the time, it can't be super aggressive, it can't be nudgy, it can't really poke around corners and just continually harass people, whereas the Object 277 can. Do I think that there are alternative options? Yes, we've mentioned a few, and there'd be no wrong answer really playing at tier 10 in any of them, but yeah, this is the one that I feel has been super, super fun to, for me to play. I always seem to do well in it, and that's probably why it's so high on the list, or at least the, my kind of preference choice. There are definitely good alternatives. You could play something like the Fosh 155 with the 400 um, alpha damage gun that can deal nearly two, well, two and a half thousand damage nearly um, in one clip, which would be perfect, to be honest with you. But there's so many different options, and at the end of the day, it's completely down to you. How However, these are some good options, a good guideline as to the types of tank that are good for the playstyle, and yeah, this is the one for me. And hopefully you did enjoy this video, and hopefully you've left your own comments and opinions, because I'm not always right. I'm a player that has played 22,000, well, 23,000 battles, I think, at this point. I'm boasting a 62% win rate, or somewhere thereabouts, um, on World of Tanks console. Um, so, yeah. Let me know what you guys are thinking as the top tanks, the most competitive tanks at each of the tiers, and possibly even tiers lower. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you join me in the next one, and of course, I'll see you there, goodbye.